Some facts to keep in mind about the Hyper-V replica. You can create a replica with another Hyper-V host regardless of its domain membership. So it could be in a completely separate domain, a completely separate forest, could even be in a workgroup. So it's not required that they be a member of the same domain. They simply have to have a network connection between the primary and the uh, replica. If you are not in the same Active Directory forest, then your hosts are considered to be members of untrusted domains. So either that's a different forest or your server you want to replicate to is in a workgroup. If that's true, you do have to generate a certificate and use certificate-based authentication. Now, that's not extremely common. Uh, typically, both your Hyper-V servers will be owned by you, and both will be within the same Active Directory domain. If not the same domain, definitely within the same forest, most likely. But if not, you can just use your cert-based authentication. When you install Hyper-V, it actually creates a local security group named Hyper-V Administrators. So you'll see this, if you were to go to a computer management on any Hyper-V host, you're always gonna see this Hyper-V Administrators. The person that configures the replication has to be a member of this group. So even if you are a local administrator on the server, but you are not a member of the Hyper-V Administrators, you would not be able to configure this. I mean, you would just have to make sure your account gets added to the Hyper-V Administrators local group. You can also limit your replication to specific servers. I could replicate to actually more than one server if you wanted to. If you want to do that to more than one server, you have to specify a trust group. This just identifies the servers that a virtual machine can actually be replicated to. If your other Hyper-V host is not a member of that trust group, you just can't replicate to it. So that's just an option. A common concern we have is security. If I have a primary server and then a replica server, just how does this authenticate to know that the VM should replicate? What measures are in place to make sure it's secure? Well, the first one I'm concerned about is authentication. Assuming you are in the same Active Directory force, which again is most likely, you will use Kerberos authentication. Kerberos, we discussed earlier, is just the authentication protocol for Active Directory. If you are not in the same Active Directory structure, then you just have to use certificate-based authentication. You also have to configure the Windows Defender firewall to allow HTTP and or HTTPS Hyper-V replica traffic. Now, this will be HTTPS traffic. Uh, it's encrypted, but you could have it be clear text HTTP. You really wouldn't do that. The only reason that's even an option if your Hyper-V hosts are in the same data center, maybe they're one rack away from each other and you just want them to replicate, but traffic never goes you know, outside of the data center, then you don't have a need to encrypt the traffic just to send it to then have it decrypted. Typically, you would want encryption if you're going to cross a WAN link. So in the firewall, normally you will just create an exception for both of these, but you have to manually create the exception. It's kind of weird it doesn't do it for you. What we'll see when we look at this in the interface, it does give you a pop-up message saying, once you configure the Hyper-V replica, saying you have to go to the firewall and you have to enable these rules. So it will tell you to do it. It just won't automatically do it for you, which is kind of strange because most other things like remote desktop, when you enable remote desktop, it automatically creates a firewall exception for you. And most things work that way. This is just like the odd one out.